This is Tiffany Grant, and you're listening to Geek Era. Stupid nerds ruin everything, right? Yeah. Every Jedi, every Sith man. I'm that guy. And I beat battle toads. Yes, I'm a dungeon master. Stay through the credits and adventures. Every home that I'm watching, don't you know? Cause there's something after. I'll cure, I'll spoil it for ya. Cause it wasn't even really that great. So don't bother wasting your time here. Let me recommend you something better anyway. I wrote petitions for every show that I'm missing. And my gamer score is dope. I get every item and I finish every mission. Who's got the casting in it? What's that they're doing, man? I gotta sign on, gotta get on a mess board. Give you my opinion cause my childhood's Number one, Star Wars. Number two, comics. Number three, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Number four, Mario. Number five, Weird Al. Number six, Batman. Number seven, Cal. Number eight, The Simpsons. Number nine, TV. Number ten, every single band that I stole all their MP3s back before they all sold out. They all together. You with me now? Nerds ruin everything. How's it going? This is uh, Sean Alpha, and I'm here with a very, uh, one of the most interesting guests we've had so far onto the podcast. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Mark Reinhagen. Uh, Mark Reinhagen is responsible for uh, The World of Darkness, one of the most influential tabletop games on, on horror, really. <laughs> so... Uh, first of all, how did you actually come up with the idea for the World of Darkness? Um, well, um, I think poverty had a big part to do with it, actually. Uh, I was really tired of, uh, you know, living in uh, my office and uh, making games that didn't sell very well and uh, eating day-old donuts and ramen noodles. Uh, and um, I decided, okay, uh, it's time to write a hit game. And... Um, and I just sort of uh, cast around for like a year and a half on different ideas and, uh, you know, um, and then realized I had to sort of uh, really find what I loved. And so I started reading philosophy again, and metaphysics and theology and history. And, and, uh, and then I remembered um, one day Jonathan Tweet and I had gone to see a movie called um, Lost Boys. And uh, we were both in college at the time, and, and he came out of the theater, and he said, "Boy, I wish we could have could have done a, a do a role playing game with vampires. It would be so boring to hunt vampires and only vampires. It'd be just a really boring game." And I went, "Yeah, but I bet there's a great way to do it." And so anyway, I remembered this years later, and on the way to Gen Con, uh, it just came to me. And uh, I started scribbling a notebook. I, I forced them to pull over and buy more notebooks. That whole Gen Con, I didn't do anything fun. I just scribbled in my notebooks. I scribbled all the way back home, and for the next nine months, <laughs> all I did is uh, write. And uh, pretty much uh, out of that idea came not only Vampire, but the entire world of Germans. Huh. Uh, how did you actually get into tabletop gaming itself? Um, my father was a Lutheran minister, and he used to have uh, he used to train ministers, and uh, so these interns they're called would come and uh, um, stay in our hometown, get an apartment, and they'd learn how to be a minister. And uh, they would always come over for Sunday uh, lunch, which is what is the big meal of the, of the week for a Lutheran minister. <laughs> And uh, one of his interns came over and said, hey, there's this new game called Dungeons and & Dragons. And in it, you get to go on adventures and, and uh, kill monsters. And he said, would you like to play? And I'm like, yes. And my dad was like, okay. <laughs> and so we played Dungeons & Dragons, and I became completely obsessed. Uh, and um, quickly sort of uh, um, found um, people in the next town over. Who, uh, who are gamers. There's no one in my town, that's for sure. And, um, and uh, started playing. 
And uh, it was just, um, you know, from there, I was just uh, completely obsessed. Ah, uh, that, that must have been interesting being a gamer during a time where, you know, you had films like Monsters and Mazes and sort of that whole backlash. Yeah, I mean, um, um, now today it seems silly to people almost that this sort of thing was going on, but... But yeah, that was a real deal. I mean, my parents are very concerned and worried, and uh, um, you know, I was just so forthright about it. They didn't do it, and, and and people today don't, you know, there's so many vampire shows on TV and supernatural shows, and you know, there's Monster High, where you have werewolf, you know, cheerleader girls and stuff like that. People don't realize it wasn't that long ago that a white wolf was being severely attacked or de- being demonic just because you had vampires. Uh, in our games, and that, and that teenagers were allowed to play them, and, and we were being pressed to put a, you know, a, you know, a 18 and over only label on it, and, and all this sort of thing. And, and it's just so different today. Uh, people, people just don't realize they, they don't have any idea. Yeah, uh, I, I've known sort of, I've, I've read stories, and especially I've. I've yeah, I, I think everyone at really at this point, thanks to Dead Man, uh, Dead Gentleman Productions, uh, Jack Chick's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you have to know the history to to under understand just uh, how far it's come. And I think it's largely due to the internet. You know, um, the internet makes it uh, easy to hate things. Of course, it's easy to be a hater, but society in general, because of the internet it's tougher to sort of think that something is evil when pretty clearly it's not, you know? Mm. So uh, I sort of gathered up a list of questions from sort of uh, our fan base, you know, people that wanted to ask you stuff. All right. Uh, So uh, the first question, hold on. First question they wanted to ask you was, how does it feel to create a game that had such a cultural impact on not just in gaming, but society in general? Uh, it's kind of bizarre, actually. I mean, it's not something I ever... Um, well, actually, that's not true. It is something I always thought I would do. <laughs> uh, just a different way, I guess. Um, you know, uh, But it is always sort of shocking to me. And uh, I think a large part of my life is spent sort of running away from that, you know, I really like being anonymous and, and hanging out and, and uh, no, I'm not really a center of attention sort of person. I mean, I'm very good at it and I enjoy it while I'm doing it. But for me, it's very tiring and I, I sort of prefer, I love to observe and watch and think. That's what, what I enjoy doing, you know, and I'm a mm. people person, but, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't, some people are just born to be with people, you know, they get so charged up by it and energized and better. And for me, it's uh, it's great fun, but it's draining, you know. So, but it's it's, it's enormous. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't think I'd be, I might not be so confident and um, um, self-aware and um, sort of um, capable if if that hadn't happened. You know, you, you get a lot of um, self-confidence when when this happens to you. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Cool. Like uh, I, I even know myself. I know a lot of film critics that whenever they're reviewing a vampire or a werewolf film, they actually use the same mythology from the World of Darkness games. Yeah, it's it definitely has taken a life of its own, hasn't it? I, I mean, I guess that's what I'm most proud of is that I, I create mythology, and you know, and that and that I sort of create this context and purpose and reason behind a world, and, and that this becomes so part of the mythology that that it's there, you know, and when it comes to vampires and werewolves and and uh, other supernatural creatures, and uh, I think you know, a lot of people have sort of borrowed a great deal from the world of darkness and that's that's pretty cool I gotta say uh, I'm not upset at all, all about it I mean, I, I wish more people would talk about it besides the people who are fans you know, a lot of people kind of pretend it's not there but but I think in the end um, it'll be understood, especially when my new game comes out, which will hopefully push all the stuff front and forward again, and, and make it clear that that you know 
that that this is not just a one time thing that you know this is something that I do. Oh, yeah. The the second question we wanted to ask you was uh, which setting was actually the most difficult to sort of put together and sort of why? Oh, Wraith was by far the most difficult. Um, I'm, I'm just actually a very optimistic, happy person, and, and Wraith was just so difficult for me to put together. I think I did a, some great stuff in it. Uh, the Shadow, in particular, I think is a great role playing uh, thing. Um, but but I mean, uh, it's just very very hard to sort of do a uh, a world in which you're both real and not real and you're interacting with a world that's both real and not real to you and and it's just not a real world, you know, and, and that's not for me something that was that easy. It was kind of hard. And so um, that was by far the hardest, you know, and um, I sometimes wake up from dreams where I'm like behind schedule on Wraith and I <laughs> and like uh and I'm sweating and panicking, and I don't know what to do. And you know, I, I still have you know dreams about that. It was it was a very hard time for me. Still an equally standard answer. Sorry, it's just true. I mean, I agonized over the all the clans, not just the initial ones, and and um, you know, figuring out the trope, the archetype, the the mood, the the intensity, the the uniqueness, the sameness, all these things are just so carefully balanced. It's just such a difficult thing to do. And, and you know, and so you fall in love with each one, you know, it's, it's not a, it's a creator thing, you know, like, it's not like, Oh, I want to play that. This is who I'm like the most. No. I mean, each of them has an aspect of me in them, you know, I, oh, yeah. I made them all. So I love them all. Uh, the next question is, uh, uh, how do you feel sort of, you know, Vampire the Requiem compares to Vampire the Masquerade? I know a lot of people sort of like to argue between the differences between the, the two, Old Wad and New Wad. Yeah, I think that's the greatest shame about it is that it sort of divided the fan base in half. And, you know, and that's always a bad thing. You don't want to divide your fan base in half. It kind of makes them fight each other instead of, you know, pulling people in from the outside and making them join, you know, what's going on. And so it kind of, by dividing the fan base in half, it's just a, a real shame. That said, I think Requiem had better rules. I mean, it's definitely an advancement in the rules system, and it was really, really great rules. Well done. I wouldn't, mm. wouldn't necessarily do all the rules changes. I mean, I, I definitely like uh, some things. Uh, I would have done some things differently, but I think some the combat was certainly streamlined. Some oh, of the yeah. changes, uh, though, were definitely um, uh, not something that I would have uh, um, done myself. Uh, uh, we actually have a question for some of our female fans. How do you feel about having groupies? Uh, <laughs> I hate it, actually. Uh, you know, vampires tend to be something that people do stalking and as a person who's been stalked, it's not a oh dear. it's not a cool thing. And it's one of the reasons why I live in the middle of Asia <laughs> you know, um, because Central Asia is that, you know, it's sort of I can get away from that. So I mean a convention, you know, polite fans are great. I have no problem with that at all. But, you know, um I don't think anyone especially likes being uh, fondled or something, I guess, <laughs> or, or, or stalked, certainly. So, so groupies are fine. Fans are great. Um, but, but, you know, boundaries are important, right? Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, uh, we, we've all had our share of stalkers at this point. Uh, what do you actually miss most about working with World of Darkness? I miss um, the world of darkness is based on the premise that what people believe in the most and the strongest and the most people believe in is the truth. And there's something about that premise that leads itself to a kind of romantic storytelling and um, depiction of truth and, and human foibles and of mythic 
importance that is truly epic and beautiful. And so playing with those sort of themes is just really powerful. And right now I'm playing more with science fiction themes and it's still incredibly mythic and powerful, but, but it's based sort of more on a real world rather than a world where belief creates reality. And, and, and in the way that, that, that sort of theme of, you know, belief creates reality, you know, is easier. <laughs> I certainly didn't have to uh, talk to scientists every day and check in on things. Is this possible? Is this not possible? Okay, how does this sound? You know, it, it was easier and, and, and more fun in a way. It was like being back in philosophy class and arguing metaphysics. Uh, I know you, you had a, a Kickstarter campaign. How, what did you learn from actually doing your Kickstarter? Uh, what I learned is uh, never do a Kickstarter alone. <laughs> Uh, the democracy has finally shipped, uh, and uh, that's a great thing. And uh, I'm Zombie. We now have a team of uh, eight people uh, now, um, some four of us full time. So uh, it's just a very different world now than it was when I did Democracy the Board Game when I was all by myself. And when I got ill, there was literally no one to pick up the slack. So... You know, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of, you know, what I learned. Uh, uh, Kickstarter is also very difficult to do correctly. So I would say for those of you who are designers, um, like me, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, I think it's better to, uh, find other ways, which is what I'm doing now. We have investors. We have a full, you know, corporation. We're doing, going to go through game stores. Eventually, we might go back to Kickstarter, but, but for right now, I, I feel, you know, kind of burned by it, and especially with some, some of the harassment you get from people on Kickstarter mm-hmm. who don't exactly, um, you know, who basically maybe go a step too far than they should in <laughs> pursuing vengeance in the name of justice, so they believe. So you, 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 get, you get a lot of people... Um, I think on Kickstarter who kind of consider, Oh, I own you now. And so it's okay for me to send you, you know, violent porn, you know, from random emails and things like that, you know, oh, yeah. it, it, it's not, it's um, not, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, it's one of the, the reasons like, why I Kickstarter is just actually just started opening up here in Ireland. So we actually do have a friend of the podcast that is running a Kickstarter at the moment. By himself, okay. we're trying to help him out. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for things like a podcast, doing a Kickstarter, I think it's a lot different than a product. Um, uh, he's he's uh, doing a comedy to the podcast, but when you're doing a product like a game and it's late, then, then people get really. Um, some people, not everyone, most people are cool. Almost everyone is cool, but there's like five or six people who kind of go nuts, you know, and they go really nuts. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's, it's but, you know, that's human beings. You're going to get all types. So the the last question we sort of wanted to ask is, uh, what is the most ridiculous question or sort of scenario you got while running a game? Um, well, uh, in the game that was before um, Vampire, it was called Demon, and you played a famous person in hell. Uh, and literally it was, you know, it was a hell game. You were in hell, and you're a famous person. And that's so... I was standing in front of a fireplace and shouting about my deepest Asmodeus voice, I am the demon Asmodeus, welcome to hell, you know, that sort of thing, yada, yada, yada. And um, suddenly uh, we hear a crash and all the lights in the house go out. And I run outside and a pizza delivery truck had, um, the guy had left his brakes off and then slowly rolled down the hill into the electrical transformer box. And then when I ran out the door, I could see him in his car. He ran into his car and tried to start it. And I was like, dude, there's gasoline dripping. That's, the, that's a power box. Get out now. And he wouldn't get out. And, and I kept yelling and finally basically pulled him out. And a few minutes after that, the, his car t- gas tank exploded. And it blew up every computer in our house, every fax machine, every phone, everything, every clock. You know, 
And basically the company was out of business. So that was the most dramatic role playing or gaming moment I've ever had in my, in my life. So basically that was my ultimate business moment because I basically spent the next four days on the phone with a borrowed phone, mind you, to Domino's basically trying to make a deal where we get paid out quickly and, and basically get our stuff redone. They wanted to wait like six months. And I was like, no, we'd be out of business. We, we know we have no money to buy new stuff. So that was it. That's crazy. Uh, I just want to thank you again, uh, Mark, for coming on to the podcast. You bet. And uh, we'll be we'll be looking forward to your your, your new game coming out. Yeah, I am Zombie. It's uh, well, Democracy should be in the store soon, I hope. And then I am Zombie uh, will be um, out in the spring, and uh, it's a role playing game and a board game, um, sort of both. It's a role playing game where you uh, use cards. Uh, as your character sheet, you still use dice, you roll dice, but um, basically you can create a character in like a minute if you want, or you can spend all night, of course, uh, figuring the best combination of cards. But uh, it's a very simple, elegant system and um, a great setting. So uh, check it out. Cool. And this is Sean Alpha signing off for the Gara special. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, what's it about it? Hey, this is Annalise. And Neil C. from the Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks podcast. Proud members of the Musings of a Geek podcast network. (laughs) Time for you to get ready for some audio awesomeness. Now give me some BS9, Mr. (laughs) Lecter.